Hello, I am Janice Smith, and it brings me great pleasure to be your moderator, along with Dave Hardy, and we are here at the All-Candidate Great Debate here in Scarborough. It's a public forum intended to connect the community residents in Scarborough with the con candidates that are running in Scarborough to ask them a few questions, getting them a little bit more informed before they make their decision on October the 22nd. I would like to welcome the panel of candidates for Ward 23. To my immediate right, we have Ashwani Badwaj, we have Maggie Chi, we have James Chow, we have Damien Alstead, we have Anthony, Anthony Intercola, we have Cynthia Lai, we have Mambu Mian, we have Nathan Saba, and we have Felicia Samuels. Welcome all. So at this time, I would like to tell you that this debate could not be done without our sponsors, and I am proud to say that this segment is uh, a debate is brought to you by Big Canadian Airlines. It's Toronto's most van lines. I said airlines, didn't I? I'm thinking of travel. Forgive me. <laughs> I want to be in Jamaica right now. So I stand corrected. It's Big Canadian Van Lines. It's Toronto's most affordable moving company. So if you're ready to move, Big Canadian Van Lines is the one for you. So with, this, with that, at this time, I would like to just go over the format a little bit. Now, each candidate will make an opening statement with no interruptions. They will be given two questions that were prepared by the moderators, Dave and I, and given to you in advance. The next set of questions will be ones that was given to us by our audience members, and I welcome you to the debate. And these questions were submitted in writing when they arrived today. So each candidate will have one minute to respond to all of the questions. And uh, you notice that you have two rebuttal cards. As Dave said, they're like soccer, soccer cards there. Uh, you have an opportunity to uh, rebut two of the questions from your opposing candidates. Keep in mind that any of these uh, cards that are used you will, um, or not use rather, you'll be able to add them on to your closing statements. So with all that said, I say let the debate begin. We will start with Ashwani in your opening statement. Thank you, Janice, and thank you, Dave, for doing it, and thank you very much, everyone. Um, I live in Scarborough from the day one I landed in this great country, and I love Scarborough. It is in my bones, I tell you that. Scarborough deserves a better leadership, a strong leadership, not only for just Scarborough and especially for Scarborough North. We need to make an affordable housing, affordable living for everyone in Scarborough North. I'm running to be the next city councilor for Scarborough North. Thank you. Um, for the Scarborough North, and, and Th which means thank that you. Thank Scarborough you. That um, was not his phone going off. It's your time is off. Oh, yes. I think he's showing me something. Yes, <laughs> yes. and yes, that is the timekeeper. So when you hear that, yes, Maggie. So don't do it. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maggie Chi, and I'm running to be your city councilor for Ward 23, Scarborough North. Um, so for the past five years, I've had the distinct pleasure of serving uh, the community, especially people living in the ward, um, you know, by working uh, in Councilor Chin Lee's office, having that city experience, and solving day-to-day -day issues, and connecting people with the city services. Um, so I really believe in efficient and effective use of our tax dollars, and I want to work with our community in bringing up the city services and uh, bring up better transit as well as uh, better programming that's fitting for the community. Thank you so much. And I just be sorry before, James, before you do begin, I, I, I have to apologize. We did say that in the boardroom we were going to increase their opening uh, to an additional 30 seconds. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds additional. 
me, I, I'm running to be their next consular, and I believe that Scarborough needs a bolder vision, and I can tell you one thing, that I've been serving the community for over 30 years, and that's what I want to bring to the Scarborough North, a, a place for everybody, for everyone to live healthy living environment. Thank you very much. Maggie, would you like to have a 30 more seconds? Uh, I'm, I'm good with the whole thing. Okay. Thank you so much. James? <laughs> James, you do have a minute, and here on in, everybody has a minute. One minute? One minute, yeah, we'll, we'll, yes. we'll wait till our timer gets. Yes. Okay. Okay. He's good. Okay, okay James. Yes. Thank you, James. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everybody. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm James Chowd, academic background, bachelor's degree, uh, graduate from U of T, major in commerce and criminology, community background. Since high school, I participate in various community centers, uh, considering bylaws, constitutions, etc. My vision is to make a better world for us, 23, and a better city of Toronto. I'm a grandfather of two, and, and I am coming out with retirement purely for this purpose. Because I have seen over the years that we have too much talk the talk and not enough walk the talk. So we need to do something now. Thank you. Thank you, James. My name is Damien Halstead. I'm running for city council. I want to thank everyone for showing up and be participate and give us the opportunity to tell, express what our vision is for this community. I've been living in Scarborough for over 20 years, and I see the lack of improvement and infrastructure when it comes to housing, roads, subway, libraries, and community housing, plus projects that need to be developed, has not been developed over the years. And we have been going, instead of we going forward, we're not going, we're going backwards. So it's time for a change where you can give a better focus, give a leader a better chance to improve the area. Great. Thank you, Damien. Anthony? Good afternoon, uh, Scarborough. How are you? Uh, this is Anthony Trinicola. I'm running the city council for Scarborough North. I believe in the people's vision and people's voice. I'm a good listener. Uh, it's all about the people, uh, not about me. Uh, there are mayor candidates that believe in their vision, but uh, I'm here to stand strong for the people. I've been here since I was eight years old. And it's time for a true leader. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Cynthia? Good afternoon. My name is Cynthia Lai. I'm your neighbor, a wife, a mother, and a business owner. I've been a long time resident in Ward 23. I stand my name on the ballot because I believe Scarborough has been so neglected. Scarborough deserves better. Scarborough needs someone who cares enough to get things done. And being elected by the peers to serve as the first Chinese Canadian female president at the Toronto Real Estate Board and the board of the Real Estate Council three times, I bring experience that matters and expertise and skill set as a problem solver will make me the right person in dealing with all these issues and challenges facing our community. I'm committed and I will bring my proven record of caring and success to the community. I hope I'll be able to represent Ward 23 with a strong voice and mat that matters to fight for Ward 23 at City Council. My platforms are threefold. One is community safety, second one is supporting and caring for our seniors, and the third one is about the Shepherd Subway. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Mahbub? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mahbub Mian, and I am running for City Council at Ward 23. I have around 18 years experience <coughs> just living in Scarborough. And I know Scarborough each and everything. I know all the problems of Scarborough. That's why I'm running for Scarborough elections. And uh, my professional degree, I am environmental scientist. I spent almost now 30 years in the environment in the international levels. I attended many conferences. And I wish to go to the city to work for the environmental improvement of the city and the Scarborough as well. Right now, I am working for a president of an international technical environmental company in uh, Scarborough, and uh, also I am running many two or three NGOs for social welfare. So my main objective is just to, to give a very peaceful environment to the Scarborough and the Toronto as well, because we are listening every day on the CB24, the CBC every day, the stabbing and the gun violence, all these issues there. 
and for which everybody is scared. And we not came in Toronto and Canada for these things. We came here for a peace, so we want to bring a peace in. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Nathan? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear family, friends, and residents of Ward uh, 23, this is a very uh, historic time right now. Uh, for the last few years, we had a uh, councillor Chin Lee, and right now, the people have a choice to elect someone new. My name is Nathan Saba. They call me the people's champ because I always fight for Scarborough, and I was always a leader for Scarborough. I was born in Sri Lanka, but I came to this beautiful country when I was two years old, in 1988. Right now, I'm 32 years old. I love this War 23 because right now it's a big area and half my life I lived in Malvern and half my life I lived at Mirafield and Finch, which includes War 23. I went to schools in Malvern Junior Public School, Dr. Marion Hilliard, and I went to Albert Campbell. I was one of the youth that faced racism, that faced transportation issues, Thank you. that Thank you. faced all Thank the you. issues. Thank and you, I Nathan. know that's your time. Thank you. Felicia? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felicia Samuel, and I want to thank the organizers for arranging this debate. Um, a good saying is, it seems impossible until somebody does it. And I want to do what seems impossible, which is make change in Scarborough. When I'm talking to members, to residents, they're telling me there hasn't been change in decades, and I know because I've lived here. I've actually lived in eight different places in Scarborough, which includes Ward 23. I'm also alumni of Asian Court Collegiate Institute. And what we need going forward is somebody with energy who is committed to building our transit, bringing companies and organizations to Scarborough, and making sure our services remain public. Public services must remain public and that we have good jobs for our residents and we are able to lift everyone out of poverty and make sure we have a better life for everyone here in Scarborough. We need someone with an equity lens and I bring that to the table and I cannot wait to serve you with my experience as a teacher, an executive officer and a proud Scarborough resident. Thank you. We have. Wow, oh, you got uh, some support there. You can hold your applause, please. Yes. <laughs> we'll have applause at the end. Yes. Sure. <laughs> and hold your applause right now because we just uh, have Sandeep who just joined us. Uh, Sandeep uh, Sivatrava. Please, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, so we're going to put you right in the spotlight right now with your opening statement. Hi, my name is Sandeep Sivatrava. I'm postgraduate in computer science. I grew up in Scarborough North. I, I was born in India. I, I grew up in Scarborough North, and uh, I'm raising my family in same ward. In the previous election, I ran for the city councilor because I'm facing same issues as you do. So I'm here for you, your family, and the community to resolve all local issues. Um, the main reason I'm running here is uh, transit, taxes, and also uh, poverty. These are three main issues I'm fighting for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And now we are at the portion where we're asking the, for the two questions. The first question, and I'm going to ask, Sandeep, I'm going to ask you to uh, answer first, and then we will go uh, backwards. The first question is, if elected, what do you propose to accomplish for the people of your ward? And you have one minute to answer. I want to upgrade, improve, expand public transit. I want to build Scarborough subway along um, Separate Avenue. I want to build LRT all the way to Malwar Town Center. And uh, I want to protect our community from gun violence and crime. I want to secure increased funding for seniors, uh, programs, and also uh, their uh, golden years so they can enjoy while here. And I want to keep the property taxes below the uh, rate of inflation. So these are main uh, proposed uh, uh, I want to propose uh, this uh, in the city council for my ward. Thank you. F Felicia? Thank you. 
the first thing I want to bring is some energy. We definitely need energy and someone who has the will to make change in our, in our ward and in our city. And we haven't really seen that in a long time. And now is our chance. I want to make sure that we are developing transit. We've waited for decades for subways to come to Scarborough. When I talk to residents, we all are of the same opinion. We are tired of waiting. We, don't, we want to be alive to enjoy some good transit here in the city in, in Scarborough. So for me, LRT networks are key because it can, they can connect more of us. They are safe, they are quick, and it doesn't preclude us from building subways, but it's actually something we will see in our lifetime. Along with that, we have to protect our public services and make sure that we are fighting for proper wages, so a fair minimum wage. We do have a lot of issues of poverty in our ward and in our city. We need to make sure that people are receiving adequate pay so that they can pay the high rents that we have. And that's another thing I want to bring down. Um, housing, make sure we have more affordable housing and make life better for our people here in Scarborough and across the city. Thank you. Nathan? Uh, I know everyone is gonna talk about transit uh, because that's the number one issue in Scarborough right now. Uh, I used to work at RBC for the last seven years, and every day, wake up at six o'clock, I start work at nine. It takes about one and a half hours just to go one way. Every day, three hours, my life shattered. And this is not uh, a small problem. This is a very big issue because this is dealing with someone's daily life. I, to be frank, I sometimes got depressed because every day, I would spend three hours of my life just traveling to a, a spot. But my next concern is jobs. Jobs have to come to Scarborough because in Scarborough, we have all the talent that we need. We have all the space that we need and we have the people to get those jobs and we have the education and the skills necessary. Most of the core in downtown, they come from Scarborough because Scarborough is a very unique place and it has characteristics of all. And I'm a strong believer in Scarborough and I believe Scarborough should be strong. Thank you. Thank you. Mian? <clears throat> if I elected, I went to the city councilor. My top priority will be the, to maintain the law and order situation in Toronto. We all came here for a peace, not for this purpose. And I will work with the law enforcement agencies to find out the root causes of these all criminal peoples, root causes of all these crime, uh, crimes. And that's my top priority, to find out the root causes and to eliminate the elements which are creating this type of gun violence, stabbing and uh, gun and the shooting, everything, and which is not good for our life. Because if there is no peace, there is no life. And that's my top priority. And secondly, I will work on the, on the small business, business businesses for, to bring the more jobs over here. If we have more jobs here, if we have more business here, then more people will be comfortable and happy over here. So that's my top priority. And being an environmental scientist, I want to work for City of Toronto to, as an environmentalist to improve the situation in the, and give awareness to the people of the Toronto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cynthia? Hi. My top priority will be building up the Shepherd extension to Ward 23. I am a subway champion. I have been uh, really advocating to the, to the extension of the subway, and then there's a it's about time that we get moving because you know we have uh, we can work with the federal governments with the funding and with the provincial government and then you know if there's a will there's a way i believe that it was way way overdue that we need transit because uh, toronto is one of the worst commute times in in some of the big cities and we're well cast cities so this is very, very priority to me. The second one is about seniors. I wanted to actually make, this, make the quality of the life of the seniors as our ward is growing older and mature. So I wanted to make sure that they have a very, very good life and, uh, and then community violence as well. I wanted to uh, uh, combat that. So just so that I wanted to, you know, outreaching to the community to see whether we can do some neighborhood watch and whether we can get more policing and to, you know, to police the streets. And it's very important when I knock at the doors that this is but we're safe in the, uh, we live in a safe neighborhood. Thank you, Cynthia. Anthony? If elected, my top priority is crime, gun control, and then sh uh, the Shepherd Subway, and uh, rent cap. So if, if elected, I will bring strong leadership, and I will listen to the people clearly. 
It's about the people. It's not about us. It's about the people. Thank you. D Damien? There's a saying, if you build it, they will come. For a long, for too long, we have waited for subways. It's time for us to stop, speak, and just get on it. Housing issue is one of our main problems. We need affordable housing, safety. For our community is not safe. Every, every time we wake up, we hear crimes happening day in, day out. So therefore, we need to have a better strategy in terms of police going out and increase of police service when, as they will help and work with the community to be a safer community, as well as um, infrastructure. For too long, our libraries, our roads, and school has not been done anything about. So it's time for a change where as we can have build up a better community that we can see growth within the community in terms of jobs coming towards the area. Because when the subway is built, we will have more jobs coming into the area because the transportation is one of the key aspects of our day-to-day -day life. So therefore, subway coming will have more jobs. And therefore, we can have more funding to build up other areas and improve Thank you, Daniel. Housing. J James? Hi. Um, this, the question is uh, uh, pretty much holistic. So basically, overall, I, my, my project, my vision is to make this world better and how to make it better. The, it, is, it is a system within a system. But to take that out, my first focus will be housing because housing is one of our basic needs and it relates to supply, demand, and income. On the supply side, I would search, I would search the, uh, the city assets to make it more accessible. And on the income side, I would bring in social enterprise, business that has a social mission. With them, together with us, it will be a win-win situation. Once housing fall in place, all, all the ingredients would come into place. Thank you. Thank you. Maggie? Thank you, Jenny. So, um, you know, for, for, for a long time, that Scarborough um, issues have not been forefront. So I really want to focus on Scarborough-centric and make sure that our issues experienced in our community are heard well and loud and clear at council. Um, so that includes transit, that includes good transit, connected transit um, that connects to every part of the ward. Um, we're building on top of the subway and we, we got to make sure we have workable higher order transit on both Shepherd and Finch. And uh, the more connected the way we are and the more accessible we are, the better it, it is um, for people to move around in the ward and um, you know, have different opportunities and options. And also I want to establish community advisory groups for different community centers. So we have um, community specific programmings that works for our community, that serves the need for our community, you know, whether it be senior or youth or young families. Um, and uh, city service side, I think we need to ex assess the gaps in our service and uh, make sure it's properly looked after. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Ashwani? <clears throat> See, the last, last time every, anything was built in Scarborough about the transit was in 1985. Since then, Scarborough has been shortchanged on every, every aspect. What I want is to not just in, build one subway or one LRT or one bus. I want to expand and improve and have an integrated transit system where you have a more moving the people within Scarborough on a much better way in a, and the frequency of the buses available to them so that they can have a better jobs within Scarborough than outside Scarborough. That would be my one thing. Second, um, safe neighborhoods is, is also will be my priority as well. And healthy environment, livable, livable environment will be one of my priorities uh, they're going to be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all for those answers to that first question. The next question is more so, um, what are the policies or the programs that you're going to put in place of the one key issue that you have identified that you want to solve as, as a, uh, a counselor if you get elected? So really what I'm looking for is what is the policy or the program that you want to put in place in solving one of the key issues that you have identified in your, in your ward? And, and we'll start with, with Maggie. 
you. Um, so as, uh, as you all know, uh, transit, it is a big problem in our part of the, the neighborhood. Um, the province has, um, has, a, has promised that we are going to build two additional stops, which I think is a wonderful idea because with what the additional stop on Lawrence, we're going to serve people who, ha who needs to access um, a very essential service, which is Scarborough Hospital. Um, and um, we got to hold that promise and make sure it's the council champions that idea, make sure it's built. And the other thing I, I think is very important is accessibility uh, to transit, which will involve developing um, the rail line uh, from Eglinton Avenue to, uh, you know, it, it will come up to Malvern and goes up to uh, Scar uh, Scarborough Campus, which is the school I attended. So increasing that accessibility, making sure that it's built well and properly planned is very important to our, for our area. So um, yeah, so that's sort of one of the issues that I identified and I hope to resolve. Thank you. James, yes? Yes. In, term, in terms of housing, when I walk the streets and knock the doors, I have, I have uh, the neighbors has informed me next to them are some Toronto housing units. Those, uh, that particular unit, I was told, was empty for a year. So I know they are either in city assets out there in the, in the city. So uh, in order to increase short supply in housing, we will have to reevaluate and assess what is available in the city and make them functional and usable. And also, in addition to that, I mentioned earlier about income. We need to bring in good job, local jobs in Scarborough and build the subway so that we have an effective uh, transit system, effective job opportunity, and also a build housing, housing and housing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Damien? For me, the, one of the most important things I'll be working on is transportation. Subway, buses, because for too long, we have spent too much time trying to get to work or grocery shopping, and it's to take too long for us, because we need to have a short time to do everything in order to spend time with our family, that we can have relax and enjoy our family time together, because when the family breaks down, we all suffer as well. So therefore, house, with, the, with, us, with the housing aspect, it will help cover it and alleviate a lot of the issue because a lot of time family would have time to spend with the kids and reduce also reduce crime aspect. Great. Thank you. Anthony, the question is to you. Okay. There's a lot of major issues in Scarborough and I believe the in the Scarborough growth. And uh, of course we're all going to get the Scarborough subway. And but what the community needs is an outreach program reduce crime. And I'm currently rebuilding a project called Project uh, Reborn. I'm very dedicated to it. And uh, this program will engage students, engage adults, everybody. And uh, it's not done yet, so this uh, Project Reborn will be published soon. So that's the major thing, to reduce crime is support groups. That's the major thing I'm going to do. Thank you. Cynthia? Well, I said that uh, I wanted to be the subway champion because I believe that in any first class city, you have to build transit. If you don't build transit, you cannot deserve to be called first class city. Scarborough has been so neglected with the subway and uh, the Shepherd extension, and it's way overdue. Let's get moving. Because you know, if there's a will, there's a way. We can get funding from the federal governments, and with the uh, 600 million dollars that the province has promised us, we should build it. And the other thing is about the, uh, uh, you know, they were telling me whether there's chicken first or the egg first. You know, there's not enough people, so we should actually intensify so those uh, areas that are on top of the subway, so people don't need to you know, to drive, so they have to go by the subway, and then that's, if we increase the intensity of those area, with my real estate background, I think it'll work, and then we, we must. And the Toronto Star said that I'm a subway champion. I wanted to be the subway champion, and I wanted to be well connected, that we, uh, you know, the, the, just reduce our commute time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mian? Hi, as I before mentioned that my top priority will be to maintain the law and order in Toronto. And uh, if you see here every day, we have a different news on s the channels, which is very big. We, our families, children, everybody is very much scared. 
what I will do because this, the police comes under the city control. So I, with the city, with the, with the people of my colleagues there, sit and we will investigate the root causes for these reasons, for these uh, type of crimes over here. Who are the people creating the crime in the area? Who are the people who are backing these crimes over there? So we have to find the root causes. Either root causes is just because of some, some gangs are there, or because of some uh, jobless uh, people there. So we have to find out the reason why we have this crime over here. This is my top priority, to just to sit with the law enforcement agencies to bring the peace and harmony in Toronto City, and being a counselor, and that will be my top priority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nathan? Dear residents, uh, the long-term issues that we have but won't be solved overnight is jobs and subway. But the immediate uh, problem right now that we have in Scarborough is, first of all, the PC government, they just passed a new law saying that you can smoke marijuana in uh, public places. That's a real issue that's going to be, be faced tomorrow. So when we're going to be walking down the roads and when we're, we're going to be smelling marijuana in the air, uh, how is that going to affect Scarborough and how is that uh, going to affect the people of Scarborough North, War 23? So as a counselor, if I get elected, I'm going to make an education program and implement it in school so students know the difference between medical and recreational, because this is a really major issue that's af uh, affecting Scarborough right now. Next issue is online harassment, because right now, this media is all social media. I got harassed the other day Thank being a candidate. Ne Thank you, Nathan. Your time is up. Felicia? So we asked for one particular policy change, and for me, that would be building rent geared to income housing here, and that could be municipal housing. And I like to aim high, so let's start at 100,000 and see where we get from there. That would be huge for me. And for us as a council, I also want to make sure that we have TCH housing that is upkept, that is available to people, and that we have, you know, we do have some rules and some enforcement around how people live in our in TCH housing. Housing is huge, it's a crisis. We don't have enough affordable housing in Scarborough. Scarborough used to be the place where you could come to afford somewhere where you, when you couldn't afford anywhere else. That's how my mom got our first house. So making sure that we are building housing, we are looking at more co-op housing and being supportive to people who need housing right now, that needs to be our priority. Thank you, Sandeep. The main key issue at the moment is poverty. I was knocking door to door, almost like 15,000, and uh, people are telling me they don't have money for the uh, property taxes, they don't have uh, um, enough income for the family, they're doing multiple jobs to pr um, support their family. So. I would like to make some policy to help all these uh, people so they can uh, move forward and uh, reduce the poverty. So it can, it can be dealing with the health, dealing with the job, dealing with the career change, dealing with uh, education. And there are lots of Syrian people over here since uh, 19, not 19, 2016. Thank you, So Sadiq. I'm teaching a couple of Syrians and thank uh, you, helping them. Your time thank is you. up. Thank you. Ashwani. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Janice. When you, when you live as a family, what do you need to have a good, healthy, livable environment, a community environment? That is not just one thing, it's a package a package in the way that you have to have a better transit, good job, better business, good atmosphere, and safe neighborhoods. For that, you have to work, when you have a good transit and a safe neighborhood and a good job, a peace comes to there as well. For that, I'm gonna work that we have a transit service available, frequency of the buses available, people go to the nearby from their home for the work, not three hours taking them to, the, to go for the work. This is what my, my priority will be, a good, 
family, livable community environment in my world based on different things, which will be my priority in my, my if I become a counselor, that will be that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just before I turn it over to Dave Hardy, I wanted to find out, does anybody have a rebuttal to any of the questions that you heard from uh, any of your people that you're running against? Uh, Sandeep, you were not here, but um, you have the opportunity, or you probably read the information, but just to give you a quick, a quick review, uh, you can rebut two of the comments that you've just heard. Um, if you don't, then we'll just add it on to your closing statements. Uh, does anybody want to rebut? At this time, I will turn it over to Dave. Oh, yes? In regards to, tra in regards to transportation, um, the province is taking up. I'm sorry, uh, Dave, who are you rebutting by? Um, Cynthia Lai. Cynthia, okay. Because in terms of the province, 300 and, um, 660, that was from the federal government 2013, while the province gave $1.5 billion, whereas it should have been 1.8 because they said of substance they have to reduce because of fees and so on. So just a, just more of a correction in terms of funding for funding for the province aspect to just itemize it out. Okay. Would you like to respond, Cynthia? Would it, would it be taking off my time if I respond? No. no. No? Well, I guess funding happens all the time and it changes every minute. So basically, uh, I stand corrected if it's not the right, uh, you know, among that I've, I've been quoted. But I think uh, uh, my my bottom line is that we, that we should be actually getting uh, asking for the federal government and for the provincial government to get more funding, and then we can work with the community, and then we, you know, just to get those uh, subway and public transit uh, just get it, get moving. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Does anybody else wish? Now, um, Damien, if you rebut the. No, what I'm she, not, I'm okay, not, I'm then not I'll just rebut. say that. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I'm not going to rebut. All right. Does anybody else wish to uh, to rebut any of the comments before I pass it on to uh, Dave for the questions from the audience? Okay. At this time, I will pass it on to Dave. Thank you, Janice. You are very welcome. Um, we've had a number of questions uh, come up to the front here related to poverty and housing, affordability and transit. I think you've covered off a lot of that. Um, we have a couple questions that are uh, per perhaps a little bit unique. As counselors, you're going to be uh, managers of a corporation, a very large corporation, on behalf of, of your residents. So I'm going to ask two questions uh, that has your ideas about how you would act as, uh, as managers. Um, the first deals with uh, privatization of, of uh, parts of our transit system. In light of uh, Doug Ford wanting to upload uh, TTC subways and privatizing subway maintenance, via public-private partnership, uh, which are three Ps. What's your position on privatizing the TTC or subways, and or do you support keeping transit public? Ashwani, let's start with you. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a big spokesperson for a public, keep the things public, and that's what I want. TTC, remain public. We have seen uh, privatization of the 407, Look at the rates where they're going. When anything becomes a private, it becomes a business. It does not state as a service to the community. A business is run for profit, and that's what they do. And that's why I want TDC remain a public undertaking, not a privatization. I'm not in favor of that. Thank you. Good, thank you. Maggie? Yes, so I do agree with the sentiment that we got to keep public transit public because this is how we can hold a system like this accountable. You know, it services the people of our city. It's not serving a private enterprise. So keeping it public is actually making it more accessible, not less, and uh, making it more affordable and not less. So we got to keep it public so we, ha we can have the public's input into what the needs of the communities are. And um, that's what I truly believe in. Thank you. Thank you. Great. James? Yes. Um, I do agree with the, the public, public facility should remain public. Having said that, the accountability of a public facility, we have to look into it and hold the, account, the, the managerial management accountable and provide good research report, good decision-making information up to our level so we can, based on those uh, information, we can make a song informed decision for us and for the future. 
Thank you. Damien. To my understanding of that private partnership, my understanding is the subway is going to be built privately, but at the same time, it's going to be downloaded on back to the city after it's properly built. So that for now, they're uploading it in terms of being f push the agenda through of building the subway bill straightforward without any obstacles. So in that aspect, I would say I'm in favor of that, and then it would be re-downloaded back to the city. Okay, thank you. And Anthony. I believe in the subway should be, well, TDC should be uh, public um, with assistance with private sectors because uh, the city can't just do it on its own. Uh, we need assistance. But uh, it should be totally supported by the city, like ran from the city. Um, so, yeah, that's what I believe in. Thank you. And Cynthia. I do not support the privatization of the subway because then if we do that, we're going to lose control on the safety, on the, you know, I mean, like we have past experience that, uh, you know, we will lose control of the operating of the system and all that kind of thing. And then uh, who is going to be uh, the, the people who are suffering from that is the public. So I do not support that. And just like the privatization of the garbage west of Young, it does not save us really a lot of money. And then, you know, I don't think so. I don't think that we should privatize uh, the, the TTC. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am. Hi. Uh, when the government goes for privatization, there are some reasons there. Not only simply they can say, OK, go for privatize. No. There are some basic reasons behind that. That's why the government decided to go for the privatizations. There are two main objectives. First is either the agency or the, 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 the department and the, that area is going in big losses. Or secondly, there is another, they are going to please somebody or some of their own people who uh, work for them in their elections or their uh, other uh, areas. So there are two main objectives. That's why the government go for privatizations. So privatization is not only a solution to, to solve the problems. If there are some problems there, then we should go and find out the problems there. Because this is a public entity, so it should remain with the public. So government should go and work for it. I mean, where we have the loop and where we have the gaps there, we have to fill up the gaps. And we to strengthen these areas and we strengthen these departments, not to go for the privatization. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nathan. Dear residents, uh, the subway won't build itself, and it costs money to build the subway. First of all, I'm not for privatization of the TTC, but I'm for the TTC being built by private entities, because we have to get the TTC built at no matter cost for Scarborough. We've been waiting way too long, and something has to get done. I believe in what the PC government is saying, that we must get it privatized, but the TTC has to be public. As, uh, as the fellow colleagues have said, um, if you turn it into a business, obviously the price is going to keep going up and up, and the residents of Scarborough are going to be lost, and we're going to lose control of the TTC. The TTC belongs to the public, but it has to be built. How is it going to be built? It has to get privatized to be built. That's my number one priority right now. Thank you. Please, yeah. Absolutely no to any form of privatization. When you open the door to certain parts of privatizing, privatization to happen, you're opening the door to privatization in, across the board. As a public school teacher, when I hear about people talking about privatizing things, it scares me because you know that creeps into our education system, that creeps into our health care system. We have to be ready to put our foot down and say no to privatization. And whoever you decide to vote for in this election on this stage needs to be someone who is not afraid to say no to privatization and who knows the effects it will have on our community and our city. And given the climate we are in right now politically, we need someone who is going to say no to privatization, plain and simple, for all of the reasons you heard, and then some. Thank you. And Sandeep. I support Doug Ford and uh, his uh, option to prioritize the subway because governance and quality of service is very important for the public. This is the only way we can control the governance and quality of service because if it is not pri if it is private, we can change the con we can change the contract anytime with the different companies on yearly or every four years and we have better control, better quality of service we can get. And we can also save money. We can use that money to somewhere else. So people of Toronto, they can have 
more benefits from it. Good, thank you. Does anybody wish uh, to have a rebuttal comment or a question before I move on to our next question? Okay, I think you're all saving that comment card to have more time at the end, which is great. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit by kind of calling you, uh, nobody's got questions or comments? Okay, I'm gonna call it randomly now, uh, folks, and here's the question. Um, city services include policing and road maintenance, garbage collection, recreation, parks. Would you support property tax increases to improve services in your ward, or are the services fine as they are? And Damien, I'm gonna start with you. We don't need to increase any, we could do it by efficiency because there's a lot of ways within departments there that can be look efficiency to find that we can use different resources to provide for personnel that to increase those sources that need such as police, fire and ambulance and community other aspect. Okay, find efficiencies then. Yes. Okay, thank you. Cynthia, what's your thought? Just, well, or sorry, you have more time if you okay, want. Okay, efficiency without losing any job aspect because a lot of time when somebody said efficiency, they equate that to cutting jobs. That doesn't mean cutting jobs. Efficiency in terms of, for example, what's the point of building a road and digging up four times just to fix one problem, whereas that shouldn't be done. It should, should have been done right from the first time. So we don't need to be doing jobs over and over, the same repairs over and over, which is just a waste of money and waste of resource. That, that's efficiency right there. Okay, good, thank you. And Cynthia? Well, I, just, I just wanted to say that I gotta probably uh, agree with my friend Damien here, because we need to actually cut the waste and to be more efficient. And uh, just like uh, cutting the, uh, uh, cutting the, the wards from 47 to 25, I think uh, some people think that it might not be a good thing to do, but I think that will say, if that will save money, that will save our tax dollar, and then we're all for the taxpayer, then we don't need to actually increase the property tax. And a lot of times, you know, when we said that, okay, when you reduce the size and then the ward is bigger, then maybe there's more that you need to do. I think we need have to, we have to think that we should, at this time of the, uh, in this time, I think we should probably work smarter and not harder. So I, I think that uh, I do not support uh, property tax. I would support that it would be staying in the, in the rate of inflation uh, for the property tax because a lot of seniors, they cannot afford to pay more property tax in the board. Thank you. Sandeep. Can you repeat that question for me? Yes, of course. Uh, city services include policing, road maintenance, garbage collection, recreation parks. Would you support property tax increases to improve services in your ward or are the services fine as they are? No, I don't want to increase the property taxes. We are paying uh, lots of property taxes right now. And uh, we are going to keep the property taxes below the inflation rate. And uh, we, have, we are going to restructure the city, like the staffing, everything. So this way we can see where we can uh, save money where we can move, transfer um, city people. Instead of firing them, we are keeping them, but we are restructuring the city. So this way we can save money and we can use that money towards uh, other programs and services. Good. So that's my plan. Good. Thank you. Ashwani. Um, I'm definitely not in favor of raising the taxes beyond the inflation rate. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, cutting services or, or bringing the money in to build something. Uh, say for example, TDC, we're talking about transit a lot here. I would rather increase the buses, increase the service, increase the tr transportation, mode of transportation so that I can increase the ridership there. When the ridership increases, the money comes in too. And that funds can be used and instead of cutting the services and increasing the property tax, no, I'm not in favor of that. I would rather use the positive way of increasing the service and used by a lot of people and bring some more funds into that. That's the way to do it. That's what I believe in. Thank you. Anthony. I totally disagree with uh, raising property tax. Uh, I think there's other ways. Uh, as my colleague Cynthia said, I totally believe what she said. As me, as your uh, as your counselor, I could like totally demand uh, other ways to uh, rebuild and 
and stand strong for the community. Good. Uh, thank you. Uh, James. Um, tax increase is un unaffordable. I am kind of a, a research guy based on statistics. There's a report by CFIB, Canadian Federation of Independent, Independent Business. The report says that the year ending on 2012, the 10 year period ending on 2012, after inflation is accounted for and everything else, the city operation budget has a 17% increase. On the other hand, Statistic Canada reported our earning is only about 6% increase on the same period. So we cannot, our earning cannot never catch up with the increase in the spending. So we cannot afford any, uh, uh, that aspect of it. And uh, we need to keep it below inflation. And that is it. And we have to find other resources. Like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, from uh, effective management ac accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Nathan. Dear residents, uh, if elected sit your next city councilor, I will definitely not raise property taxes. Once upon a time, my parents, they bought a house in Malvern, uh, which is including an award, for about 200K. Now, I just got married two years ago, and I have to buy a house now. And a simple property in Scarborough is about 800K. And if you do the math, the salary from 20 years ago and the salary now, it's about the same. So how can housing be from 200K to 800K? And how can the residents even afford to have property in, uh, tax increases? That's a big no-no. And because some people, I already know some residents can't even pay their mortgage. They're working two, three jobs in Scarborough. And the rental market is crazy now. Just to get a simple basement is $2,000. So people are finding different ways and I don't wanna lose the residents in Scarborough, because we have a very diverse and unique uh, residents in Scarborough, and people started leaving Scarborough because of the uh, thank, property. Thank, thank you. That won't be good. Thank you. Thank you. Felicia. I agree with um, what my other candidates here have said, that no, raising property taxes at this time is not necessary. And I've already got my first marching orders from residents being told, we don't want to pay any more in property taxes. I hear you, residents. I don't want to either. I'm also a property owner. That being said, we need to get creative. We do need to look at other forms of getting revenue, something like development charges. We have developers who are just chomping at the bit to get in here to Toronto and, and develop our land and make these huge projects that cost a lot of money. How are they paying us for, that, for use of that land? We need to be very careful that any councillors we elect are not in the pockets of developers. They need to be paying their fair share and allowing us to live because we already pay enough and residents are saying we do not want to pay any more. Thank you. Mian. Like the other candidates, I am totally not in the favor to go for the raising the property taxes. In my program, you see my program there, I mentioned there that the, the property tax must be assessed on the household income, which is not right now. If I went to the city councilor, the city councilor, I will reassess and that property tax must be assessed on the household income. Plus in my program, for the seniors, there should be no property tax because their people have served this country for the last maybe ages and they are still paying the property taxes. I don't think there should be any property tax for them. There should be a big rebate from the city side for the senior. There should be no property tax for the seniors. And all the property tax must be assessed on the household income. Sometimes the people have no income and property tax they are increasing day by day. No, this is absolutely wrong. Being a, if, if I go for a city councilor, in city we've raised the motion, the property must be assessed on the household income basis. And uh, if, if city wants to have some more uh, so monies, they should go for other uh, sources. There are many other ways to, to gather the money, Thank not you. the property taxes. Thank you. Thank you. And Maggie. Yes. So I do agree that we need to keep our property tax low, below the inflation rate, which is what we have been doing for the past four years. Um, but at the same time, we've got to make sure that city services that are delivered in Scarborough in Ward 24, uh, 23 three is not compromised and that you know it means coordinating with different city departments making sure work being done here is um, is well uh, coordinated and connected and you know I've been talking to residents about um, utility companies coming
coming into the ward, digging up you know lines and digging up um, the front lawn, while the city will come in weeks after doing the same kind of work. You know, with better coordination, with better use of our tax monies, we can have, uh, we can actually save a lot on that and make sure we receive efficient and effective service in our city. Thank you very much. Um, I'm finished my job and I'm going to hand it over to Janice. Uh, you've all presented yourselves very, very well. You make me proud to be a resident of this city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. And uh, thank you all candidates of Ward 20. Three. Um, we are now in the uh, part of the program where we're going to be doing closing arguments. Um, the only individual of the candidate that has one minute, and uh, yeah, one minute would be a Damon. Everybody else has one minute and thirty seconds. So I am going to do Damien, yeah, Damien first, which is one minute, and then I, like Dave, I will just choose the next person. So, Damien? Okay. On October, October 22nd, um, it's time for a change. For too long, we've been neglected at Scarborough. We need to have a better Scarborough and a better Toronto. So, therefore, we need to elect the right person to represent you at City Hall who, who is able to move stuff around and able to get the right resource and personnel to connect with person to get the works done and financial aspect to come into the city, for example, from the federal and the provincial aspect, whereas I know quite a few personnel that's there, whereas I've been in contact with, so I'll know how to move and get money from them after speaking to them. So I implore you to vote for the right candidate on October 22nd. Also, early voting is actually started on the 10th to the 12th, so you can vote for me, vote for me there as well. <laughs> <laughs> he, he meant one time, <laughs> not twice, once. It's, an, it's, a le it's illegal to vote twice, <laughs> and I don't need anyone to be uh, convicted of any crime because we need... So noted. We need. Um, Ashwani, <clears throat> well, oh, wait, before we just have to wait for the timekeeper, Varash, who's doing a great job, I might add, keeping time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for organizing in Janice. Dave, you did a wonderful job. Uh, and the questions and the people came to in attendance today. Uh, thank you very much. I encourage you to vote for the experience, relentless dedication, and trusted results for which I've been working for last 25 years for the, in the different communities in a different aspects of the of the need, everyday need that's what is going to make a difference here and my platform which also says is not just one subway or one transit or one bus is an we need an integrated transit system to be making the people moving within scarborough on a frequency basis that's what i want on that and second is affordable housing, safe neighborhoods, and better businesses bringing to Scarborough. When a better business comes to Scarborough, they bring the jobs with that. When the job comes to Scarborough, it has a better family and healthy environment, living a livable environment as well. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to make a commitment, which nobody has said this. And normally, we, people talk about the politicians only come after four years. I'm going to make a commitment that I'm being a counselor. I'm going to have a town hall meeting every quarterly within the riding, within the ward, talking to you every quarterly, having your issues taken, solving your problem, writing your concerns every quarterly. You're going to be thank tired of seeing me instead of four you. years every three months. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Sandeep, I'll throw it on the other side. Hello, neighbor. Um, I'm your um, strong voice for the Scarborough North. I previously uh, ran for the city councilor, and my platform number one is Scarborough Subway. I've been fighting for the last eight years for Scarborough Subway. And uh, the reason I'm running again, same reason, Scarborough Subway. I'm your neighbor. I talk to you every day. I meet you 
in the shopping mall, while I'm doing groceries, I'm, I'm at the barber shop. You can talk to me, you can connect with me anytime and talk to me about your issues and problems. I'm here for you, your family, and communities to resolve all the local issues. And uh, I want to work together to achieve all the common goals. And uh, I just want to make sure everybody is safe and secure in our ward. Your ward is very important to me. I need your vote and support. With your voice and strong support, we can move forward. I would be honored to be your city councilor. So on voting day and advance voting, please support Thank me. Thank, Thank you. you. Maggie? Thank you, Janice. I, I just want to take the moment to ask everyone to give Janice and Dave a big round of applause. They're amazing. They've been organizing this for the entire day, and it is not easy. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for coming out to listen to us talking about city issues, because we truly, truly love our city, and we truly, truly love Scarborough. Um, my family and I moved here 15 years ago. We decided to settle in Scarborough because we've learned, we heard about the diversity here. We heard about the welcoming community and people here. Here. So I'm proud to call myself a Scarboroughite, and I'm proud to continue advocating and championing Scarborough-centric issues. And I hope you, I can work with the community in building up on what we already have, the existing infrastructure, the existing transit network, and the existing community programming, and working with everybody in our community to make sure that our communities and every age group are taken care of. So um, I look forward um, to getting to know more of you, and I hope on October 22nd, you can vote for Maggie Chi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maggie. Um, Felicia? Thank you to the organizers again, and thank you for all of you for being here. What can I say? I love Scarborough. I've lived here pretty much my whole life. Unlike I think anyone here, I've lived in eight different places in Scarborough. So Scarborough is my home. I can speak to pretty much any ward and the realities there. We need someone who is strong. We hear about the strong voice all the time. I am a teacher. I also support teachers as an executive officer. They've called me various things from the big gun to the pit bull. When something needs to get done, they call me to get it done. As a teacher, I've worked with youth in our community to make sure that they do the best that they can do. And it's been a real honor to knock on doors and see some of them and have them come out and volunteer with me. We need someone who is going to work with community groups and people. With such a huge ward, you need someone who's been doing that and someone who is committed to doing that. And if you check out my social media, you'll see that I can offer just that. I am responsible for large budgets. I manage my own budget very well, I might say. And I was blessed to have a mother who, when she couldn't afford to live anywhere else, she came to Scarborough. And for that, I will always be indebted to Scarborough. I'll always fight for it, and I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you. James? Um, make, make our world better, that is my vision. And how do we do that? We have to engage and empower our neighbors to uh, make sure our public resources are serviceable. And we need to create favorable conditions to encourage social enterprise, and I believe in social enterprise, business with a social mission, that we can end up with a win-win situation. We have to increase housing uh, availability. All those are the different issues that we need to concentrate on, and we've been talking all along for years and years uh, uh, in the past, and now is the time to take up the action, to get it done, to put it in action. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, Nathan? Dear family, friends, and residents of Ward 23, uh, thank you to the organizers, and thank you to the owner, Mr. Kula, and thank you for all the people that have come out today. Uh, this is a very important time for us. This is a historic election. 
because uh, there's only 25 wards and there's only 25 people that is going to represent all of Toronto. So this is a very important decision. Uh, I want to thank all my fellow candidates for coming here. Uh, my name is Nathan Saba, and they call me the People's Champ because I've been here since two years old, and I'm 32 now. For the last 30 years, I've been in Scarborough, and I'll never leave Scarborough. The reason is I love Scarborough, and I've been a champion for Scarborough. I've been taking TTC to work in the downtown core. We want to get subway here. We want to get jobs here so we don't have to travel to downtown. We can just walk over and start working instead of spending three hours a day wasting our lives on transportation. Next of all, my education. I believe my education and experience will help me be an effective city councillor. Most of the past councillors, they had no communication with the residents, and that was a major issue. But now, I feel I'm the youngest candidate here, and I have very fresh legs. I can go door to door to door and see everyone in one day, probably. So follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and don't wait for October 22nd. Thank you, Nathan. Come on October Thank 10th you. and vote for Nathan Thank Sabah, you. the People's Champ. Thank you. Mia? Oh, sorry, no. Well, yeah, Mia, we'll let you go, yeah. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the yes, management and the audience and the media who are here just, just to listen to us. Actually, we all people here are running for this new ward. It is absolutely not a new ward right now. And uh, this is the right time for you people to just select the right person for the right job. Because we all are talking here a lot. We have all have different programs there. But you are the people who can select the right person for the right job. Because if he's the right person, then he can take your voice, he can take your problems to the city, and he can solve the problems. So this is the right time you people decide and go for a right job for the right persons. Being an environmental scientist, I want to have some programs to, if I go in city, I will uh, launch those best programs for the environmental awareness program for the areas because we have a lot of uh, areas where we need, still need the awareness and people not take care of the forest. Our Rouge River is a beautiful river. I go and see what the condition of there. So being an environmentalist, I want to give my ideas, my programs to the city as being as a policies. And other than that, the, as I told before, my top priority is the law and order and that which I will try my best to maintain a lot of order in the Toronto city. And also, for the best jobs, there should be a, a lot of uh, jobs for it, the Scarborough and the Toronto city as well, uh, because the, the, if we protect you. The, the small industries, and Thank more you, jobs Ian. will come over here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anthony, it's your time. Wow. What an experience. Uh, it doesn't take glamour cameras, lights, to be a leader. Yeah, this is my first time being in front of cameras, lights. I'm a leader. I'm the phoenix. I'm reborn, and I'm going to stand strong for my community. That's what they deserve, a leader like me. I demand leadership. Scarborough North doesn't have leadership. There's a great candidates here. Uh, if elected, I'm going to pick two of them. I already know who. Because <laughs> I'm a scouter and I scout. And there's great candidates. They're all great here. But my favorite is me as a leader and, and two other. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> all right. Anyways, uh, on October 22nd, Vote, Anthony Internicola. Advance voting on October 10th. Don't do a mistake and vote others. Vote me, the Phoenix, Anthony Internicola. I promise you, I will listen and I will bring your message to City Hall. Thanks. Thank you, Anthony. Cynthia. Well, dear friends and neighbors, and uh, thank you again for coming out to, uh, to this debate. And I, I think the real issue now is who can best represent Ward 23 and Scarborough. With my background as an entrepreneur and a business owner, I know how to run a business. I think City Hall needs someone who knows how to run a business, 
to make sure that we balance the books and to make sure that we cut waste. And I also care about the community. You can look at my website and see the community, the community work that I've done. I've raised $60,000 to build a house for the Habitat for Humanity in Melbourne. And I have run fundraise for uh, the Center of uh, Immigrant uh, Services for the youth program. And I have a lot of uh, heart, big heart for my ward, for Scarborough. And I stand for save a community. I stand for supporting and caring for our seniors. And I stand for building the Shepherd Subway and most more convenient transit. So I think on the, when I'm elected, not that I think, when I'm elected, I will serve you, I will outreach to you, and I will engage you, and I will return your phone call promptly, and I ask that you stand up for Scarborough with me. On October 22nd, uh, 22nd vote LAI, which stands for Loyalty and Integrity. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you all. I must say, uh, Felicia, I think we have brought some energy here to Scarborough with this great debate. I thank you all for a great debate. And I want to also thank our sponsor once again, the big Canadian van lines. And if you're looking for a moving company who's very affordable, that's where I would direct you to go. So thank you. And thank you to Dave Hardy and to our audience. World 24 is just around the corner. Thank you all. Thank you. It's a pleasure.